Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for our Allied Arts presentation today. I'm Shannon Lockwood, and I've been the Employee Giving Manager for Allied Arts for the past three years. Before I started with Allied Arts, I was a 6th through 12th grade band director, and for four of those years, I also got to teach middle school choir, and I love to share with people about why the arts are so important, because I've watched art change the lives of so many of my own students. So I'm just going to jump in with our Allied Arts presentation for this year with a little bit of basic information about Allied Arts. We are a nonprofit organization. We're located in downtown Oklahoma City in Automobile Alley. And this is our 50 year anniversary. With the wonderful help of our community over the past 50 years, we have been able to mobilize over $73 million for our arts and cultural community. And every year we have the great opportunity to help fund over 40 different arts and cultural groups through three types of grants. The ones that you see up here on the screen received funding from Allied Arts in 2020. So why is it important to have a strong arts and cultural community? Well, there are so many reasons. But one thing that applies to every single one of us is that the arts boost our economy. The arts bring tourism into Oklahoma. They give us an incredible quality of life. They give us things to look forward to. And when businesses are looking for a new state to put down their roots, they look to the arts and cultural community. They wanna make sure that their employees are gonna have a great quality of life. And that's what the arts do for us here in Oklahoma. And on top of that, Every organization that Allied Arts helps to fund has outreach programs, and those outreach programs touch every county of our state, making art accessible to everyone. And now that so many programs have gone virtual, the reach of our arts community is even broader. This uh, organization right here, Lyric Theater, they created the Lyric Kids Clubhouse during the pandemic so that kids would have some wonderful programming while they were stuck at home for months on end. The Shakespeare, Oklahoma Shakespeare, started doing master class Mondays in fall of 2020. They had free master classes with nationally renowned theater teachers and actors. And Prairie Dance Theater posted many different dance classes on their YouTube page. And I just thought they were of such high quality that I shared some on my personal social media. I have a friend who teaches elementary music classes over in Japan and he was learning in March and April how to teach virtually for the very first time and he said that he used these prairie dance theater classes with his elementary kids and it was so helpful to him because it gave him an automatic lesson plan. Our arts organizations in Oklahoma are impacting the entire world. Of course in March COVID-19 um, hit our state and it has been a disaster for our arts community, I have to say. Because when you think of the arts, you think of large group activities, you think of festivals and concerts, performances, exhibitions, classes, summer camps, all of these things either had to be canceled entirely or scaled way back to keep people safe. And as a result, many of our arts organizations lost so much revenue. The Brookings Institution put out a study in August that studied our creative industries in Oklahoma between April and the end of July 2020. And they found that our Oklahoma creative industries lost $606 million and 19,500 jobs just in that short amount of time. But in spite of all of the losses, our arts organizations in Oklahoma use creative problem solving skills to continue to bring us joy and connection and hope and escape. And that's what I wanna share with you today. There are so many wonderful stories from this tough time in our lives. And if you've heard one of my presentations before, you know that the Oklahoma City Ballet has so many free outreach programs. They have Chance to Dance, a free class for kids with special needs. They have Dance for Parkinson's. It's a mostly seated dance class so that everybody can participate. And they have Golden Swans for people who are 60 and up who just want to learn how to dance. This is all free. And within two weeks of everything shutting down due to the pandemic, every one of these classes was up and running on Zoom. They help people get logged in. And especially for our seniors, this was a lifeline. For many of the people in the classes for seniors, this is their one social activity that they do during their week. And having this class available on Zoom gave them a sense of normalcy. 
It gave them a way to see their friends. It gave them a way to get physical activity. And all of those things are so important for people's mental health, especially in a pandemic situation. And the Golden Swans class loved it so much that they basically demanded to have an extra class every week. And of course, the ballet was more than happy to make that happen for them. Last year, the organizations, the Allied Arts helps to fund provided over 643,000 art experiences for school kids in our state. And many of those art experiences were provided by Arts Council OKC. Now you know Arts Council OKC because every year they put on the Festival of the Arts and they do opening night on New Year's Eve. Now, of course, in 2020, the festival was canceled because of the pandemic. They bring 700,000 people downtown for this and they couldn't find a way to do it safely in April, 2020. And opening night went virtual bringing in no revenue. But in spite of the lack of revenue from those events, they were still able to put on their outreach programs. A lot of people don't know, they teach weekly classes in elementary schools and in senior living facilities. And of course, the first places to shut down were schools and nursing homes. And so within a week of everything shutting, Arts Council put these classes on YouTube and they had their teaching uh, art instructors use supplies that people would have at home. And one of the silver linings of this program is that now, instead of only being able to work with 15 or 16 of Oklahoma City's elementary schools, they're able to work with all 46. And at the beginning of the pandemic, you know that not every kid had access to the internet. So the wonderful team at Arts Council OKC put together hundreds of art kits for kids so that they could still continue to create even if they didn't have the internet. A hundred of those kits went to the kids at Positive Tomorrows who are living in situations of homelessness because even if a kid is homeless, they still deserve to get to express themselves through creativity and they deserve to have the supplies to do it. Isn't that incredible? We have the best arts organizations. Another one that did something really incredible in April of 2020 was the Oklahoma Children's Theater. And I could not believe my eyes when I saw this cool thing on Facebook. So every week in April on Facebook, they were posting a short story prompt and kids would write out a short story and they would turn it in to Oklahoma Children's Theater. They'd pick a weekly winner and the, the Children's Theater had a group of actors that were quarantining in the same house. So they would turn the kids' short story into a play and they would post it on Facebook. And that kid felt like a rock star. Miss Eloise was one of the weekly winners and this is what her mom said. For Eloise, the opportunity to write her skit was a much needed outlet. Then when she found out it had been it made into a video for everyone to see, well, I have not seen her smile or laugh that much for a long time. It makes a difference. When kids are going through a tough time, this sort of thing really makes an impact. Another organization that did some pretty incredible things for kids during the pandemic is Science Museum Oklahoma. As soon as all of the schools went virtual, they started posting daily activities, maybe more than daily activities on their social media. And you can still find many of those science and art projects on the resources tab of their website. And you can see these two little ones here, they were learning how wind worked by painting with straws. Such a great resource if you have kids or if you just want to do a fun science project. No kids necessary. Another wonderful educational opportunity for people young and old and in between is at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. They just opened up Licho Koshkamo, which is an outdoor way that you can explore the history of the American West. My favorite part is that they have recreated multiple Native American dwellings so you can learn about the history of different tribes in a really hands-on way. They also have created a trading post, they have a covered wagon, they have a geyser, they have a huge playground. And this is just a really, really neat way to get out of the house, get some fresh air, and learn a whole lot while you're at it. So another organization supported by Allied Arts is the Oklahoma Visual Arts Coalition. They also go by OVAC, OVAC, and they are in the business of making artists successful in the business of art in Oklahoma. They do such a wonderful job of it. I know that Oklahoma has retained many talented artists because of the work of OVAC. And one of those artists is Jason Wilson. 
Jason was also a public school art teacher in Oklahoma for 31 years. And at the beginning of his career, he really wanted to get his artwork into a gallery. And he tried and tried and tried. He couldn't figure out how to make it happen until he found OVAC. They showed him what to do. And he has had work in over 10 galleries simultaneously in and outside of Oklahoma. He credits OVAC with much of his success. So in October of 2019, Unfortunately, Jason was in a massive collision that almost cost him his life. You can see this is his car or what's left of it. He was on the highway. There was a driver next to him who's texting, swerved into him, pushed him into oncoming traffic at full speed. It took Jason six months to recover. He was pushed into an early retirement from teaching. He suffers from PTSD and he got depressed. What brings him joy is art. You can see some of his work right here. It is so precise. It looks like it's digital, but it's not. Those are paintings. And Jason was afraid that his fine motor skills would be too damaged from this accident to be able to paint in his characteristic style, but nothing would deter him from trying. So he started very slowly and he found that if he went extremely slowly, he could be even more precise than he was before the accident. And so he started getting excited and he got some art shows lined up in galleries. He started working. And sure enough, when it was time for the first show, COVID hit, everything canceled. He was so disappointed. But once again, the Oklahoma Visual Arts Coalition came to save the day. In June of 2020, they scheduled the OK Art Crawl, and there were hundreds of artists all over the state of Oklahoma that put their artwork either outside of their homes or outdoors in public so that people could come and look at their art and purchase their art. And Jason was one of those artists. He said, I went full tilt. This is gonna be the biggest art show in the history of McAllister because that's where he lives. And sure enough, he said that people drove from Edmond, they drove from Oklahoma City, they were loving his art, they were purchasing his art, and that brought him so much joy. And he said, at some point we will get through this and when we do, I need to hit the ground running. I'm motivated, I'm excited again. That's what art does. It brings us joy. It brings us motivation, it brings us hope. Another organization that Allied Arts gets to help fund is the Maybe Garrett Museum of Art. And they are in Shawnee, Oklahoma on the former campus of St. Gregory's University. And if you have not been there, I highly suggest it. They have so much neat art. They have two ancient Egyptian mummies. They have a whole collection of African masks. They have Native American regalia and they have art from multiple different continents. Maybe Garrett also brings in free field trips for kids when it's safe to do so, and they teach art classes. And before the pandemic hit, Julie Britton, who is one of their art teachers, was working with 140 kids at the Kickapoo Child Care Center. And she told me that several of the kids ha have uh, ADHD or they're on the autism spectrum. And because of that, working with the colors and the textures in art is just so impactful for them. And one of those kids is named Ryan. He's five years old. And every time that Julie would go to the class, Ryan would be slouched over. He'd be hiding in his hoodie. He would never say any words at all. And Julie asked his other teachers about that. And they said, that's normal for him. He never talks. He's nonverbal. And one day the class was working on this art project right here. They were making a giant mobile out of CDs and colorful yarn. And every kid got to come and choose their color of yarn. And when it was Ryan's turn, he pointed and he said, I want blue. And the teachers were floored. They had never heard him speak before. And so he went and he sat back down. He was working on the project. It was time to choose another color. He got up. He thought he was just going to point at it. And Julie said, use your words. And he said, I want red and he gave her the hugest hug and it was at that moment that Julie said she knew what they were doing was making a difference. 
For so many kids, art is the thing that helps them to come out of their shell. It's the thing that helps them express themselves and learn to be vulnerable and build trust with their teachers and with their peers. It's the thing that helps them build confidence. It's the thing that helps them learn how to advocate for themselves like it was for Ryan. And that's the type of thing that will serve him through his entire life. He'll never be the same kid. The next time that Julie walked into that classroom, Ryan was sitting up tall. He was not hiding in his hoodie. He was playing with the colors he was sharing with the other kids. He will never be the same in such a good way. And when the pandemic hit, maybe Gara couldn't go out to the Kickapoo Child Care Center in person anymore, but they were able to put together art kits that kids and their families could come and pick up from the museum. And I know that some of those kits made their way to the kids at the, at the Kickapoo Child Care Center as well. I have one more story to share with you today, and it is about the wonderful Metropolitan School of Dance that is headed up by this sweet lady right here, Executive Director Frances Pitts. Metropolitan teaches many different styles of dance. They have students that are three years old, up to students in their 80s, and Frances told me that 90% of the people who take dance class at Metropolitan are from low-income households. And because she does not believe that finances should be a barrier between people and a wonderful dance education, those people are on full scholarship or only paying $10 a month to take dance. And when Frances found out that not all of her dance students knew where their next meal was coming from, she partnered with the Regional Food Bank so that every time a dancer comes to class, they eat a free meal. And in that way, Frances is fueling their bodies with food and she's fueling their spirits with dance. And she's lifting this entire community of people. It's wonderful. So today I wanna to share with you about Sarah Liggins. So this is Sarah. And Sarah is a 34 year old woman and she has been taking dance classes with Metropolitan off and on for the past 28 years. So when Sarah was six years old, she had one leg that was smaller than the other one. And her doctor told her she should sign up for dance class because it would help strengthen her leg. And at the time, Sarah had absolutely no idea that dance would help her through so many more of life's obstacles than just helping her leg. She went through so many traumatic experiences in life, more than I could tell you about today. And Sarah said that dance started her healing process. Dance was very challenging for Sarah. And she said it taught her how to persevere when times got tough. It gave her a positive outlet to deal with troubles in life. One of the most traumatic years that she went through was the year when she lost eight of her closest friends and family members I mean, all in one year. Sarah told me that her family was plagued with um, health conditions that were causing them to die. And those health conditions were magnified by poor nutrition and a generally sedentary lifestyle. And unfortunately for Sarah, she was not immune to the health issues of her, of her family. And as she was dealing with stressful experiences in life, like so many of us, she put on some weight. She was afraid that she was gonna go down the same path that her family had, but she has a young daughter and she wanted to do everything she could to stay alive for her little girl. And so she was bound and determined to get healthy. She had kind of uh, fallen off of the dance class wagon. So she got re-signed up with her daughter. They started eating healthier. They got in the best shape of their lives. And Sarah is a health inspector for the Oklahoma City County Health Department. And one day she was out inspecting a business. She finished the job. She turned to leave. Her heart stopped and she fell over dead. The paramedics came. They did CPR on her for 20 minutes. They restarted her heart. They rushed her to the hospital. She was placed into a medically induced coma for two days. And while she was there, the doctor drew her blood and he said her blood came back perfect. And he told her that had she not made the health changes that she did by phys physical activity through dance and eating healthier, she would not be alive today. And Sarah said, because I had made a decision to do something better in my life than what I was exposed to, I am still here. Not only did dance give Sarah the physical stamina to actually stay alive, it gave her the will to live. When Sarah was in the hospital, Frances Pitts, 
the executive director of the Metropolitan School of Dance came to visit her because that's what happens in these arts organizations in Oklahoma. It's not just teacher student, this is family, this is community. And when Francis came to visit Sarah, Sarah said, I had to stay alive so I could keep dancing. She told me that sometimes in life people only exist and they never live. And for her, dance is her way to truly enjoy living. Her recovery has been really, really tough. The day that I talked to her, her fingers were not working. That was just part of her recovery. But she still dances because she said that's what sustains her. She signed up for four dance classes this year. Art can heal. Art does heal. Thank you for supporting the arts. I always like to share with people that typically Allied Arts does not receive city, county, state, or federal funding. This has been a much different year. Um, we have taken advantage of the federal PPP loan and the city of Oklahoma City granted us $300,000 for a community development block grant for COVID-19 relief for our arts community. And we are so, so grateful. Typically our funding comes from corporate donations, it comes from foundation grants, and it comes from individual people, people like us, people who see the impact of the arts on our economy, on our people, on our mental health, and people who know that they don't want to live in a state that doesn't have a wonderful arts community. So I encourage you, this year we need your help. If you have given to Allied Arts in the past, please consider increasing your donation this year. If you've never given before and you are in the position to do so, please give for the first time. Allied Arts, unfortunately, has already had two grantees that have had to permanently close their doors because of this pandemic, and we can't afford to lose any more. We need your help. And when you donate to Allied Arts, there are some wonderful benefits that come with it. If you give it the $50 level, you'll receive our OK City card, which is our Allied Arts discount card, and it will get you discounts at hundreds of locations. It's everything from restaurants to shopping to arts and entertainment. You can see all of our OK City card partners at okcitycard.com, or you can download our app in the App Store. Just search for Allied Arts. If you give it the $150 level, you will receive our Step Up artwork. And we have a very special piece this year because it's our 50th anniversary and the artist is Joe Slack. Joe works in steel. I'm sure you have seen many of his pieces out in the community. And he made us a very special steel sculpture this year and it has been generously underwritten by W&W &W AFCO Steel and we are so, so grateful. The piece for this year is this one that I'm holding up right here. And I was talking to Joe about it because it's abstract, so I wanted to know what it meant. And he said that all of these shapes that he cut out of it represent the obstacles that we face in life. And the piece is called Direction because it's about finding our direction in life and overcoming all of those obstacles. And I simply cannot imagine a more perfect piece of art for right now. 20 years from now, we will all have this on our shelf and we will remember every obstacle that we overcame this year. So thank you to Joe and thank you to W&W &W AFCO Steel. We also have a couple of wonderful donor groups we would love for you to be a part of. We have Catalyst, which is our young professionals group and you can join for $300 if you are an individual or for a $500 donation if you're in a couple. We also have our circle club for people who give $1,000 or more each year to Allied Arts. So why join a donor group? First of all, this year there is so much need in our arts community. And when you donate at this level, your donation is making a massive impact. But also, in typical years, our Catalyst and Circle Clubs get to do these wonderful uh, gatherings, large group events where you get to know other people who believe in having a strong arts and cultural community. It's wonderful to be in the situation where you get to know like-minded people. And when it's not safe to gather in groups, we've been pivoting and finding wonderful virtual ways to have art experiences with our donor groups. We've also found some outdoor ways to have uh, gatherings with our circle club and our catalyst groups as well. We would sure love to have you. 
So how do you donate? It's very easy. Go to alliedartswp.com and find your company's logo. Click your company's logo and you'll get to a page that looks like this. Just click the Donate Now button. And when you click that, there will be a credit card option. You can donate it one time or you can split it into 12 monthly payments. And if you do that, it's only $12.50 a month to receive your Step Up artwork and your OK City card. We also have some companies that offer a payroll deduction option. And if your company offers that, it will be on your donation website. Some of the companies we work with also offer the opportunity to donate via paper pledge form. And if your company offers that option, you'll be able to receive that form from the coordinator at your company and just turn it right back into them uh, once you have it filled out. So I wanna share with you quickly about this wonderful website. It's called artaroundokc.com. This is our Allied Arts Comprehensive Arts and Cultural Calendar. We hope you get tons of use out of it. You can find performances, exhibitions, classes, anything you're looking for in the arts is on artaroundokc.com. So let me just leave you with this thought. Throughout the pandemic, our arts organizations have been bringing us joy when joy is so hard to find. They've been bringing us hope when many people are feeling hopeless. They've been connecting us when we're not even in the same room. They've been giving us a sense of escape from everything that's going on in the world. And you have heard story after story of how the arts heal real people in our community and make their lives so much better. Right now, the arts need to be healed too. Our arts organizations need your help to heal from this pandemic. And any donation that you can make is so appreciated. Thank you so much for tuning in to this presentation today and thank you for supporting Allied Arts.